Hello there, my name is Abhas, your ProtoPy expert, and welcome to Ask ProtoPy, where we answer questions that you ask us. Today's question is how can I tap outside of a component to make it go back to its original state? Well, let's get right into answering this. To start, let me show you the Pi file that we'll be working with. You'll notice that there's a few layers and a bunch of interactions here. They're fairly simple. What's happening is if you tap on this drop down layer, you get the options group, it's expanding, and if you were to select any one of these options, it will update the text value here. So in essence, this particular thing has two states. One is the expanded state and one is the minimized state. So I've done one more thing, which is I've added a tap trigger to the background layer here. And if you were to tap it, I've just copied the same minimization responses from every one of the other options and I've plugged them in here as well. So if I were to expand this, Tapping the background layer would also minimize this. So, so far so good, this is, we all, this is what we already have to work with. Now, the challenge is how do you make this happen when you make it a component? So let's start by making this a component. I select these two containers and I'm gonna press the component button. And let's take a look at the preview again. Now you'll notice if I were to expand this, it expands, but if I tap outside to the background layer, it will not minimize anymore. So why is that? That's because components are isolated from their scenes, they're even isolated from other components. So you can't communicate with them directly, and let me show you how. If you go inside the main component, you'll notice that the same tap trigger is there, but it doesn't have the background layer accessible to it anywhere. It just can only work with all the component layers that it has, that's all. So we could go ahead and delete this, it won't make any difference. But don't worry, there is still a way to communicate with components. So what we do here is we use a very special response called send. So what we'll do here is we're saying whenever you tap the background layer, so I'll go ahead and add a tap trigger, we want to do something very special, we want to do a send response. What this does is it sends a specific message to a specific channel. We want to work with the current scene so far, let's not change this right now. But we want to type a very specific message here. It could be zero, it could be min, it could be anything. So let's just go with minimize for right now. But it's important to reuse the same message, whatever it is, when you use the receive trigger. And I will just talk about that in a minute. All right, so so far we're saying whenever you tap this, do a send. Send the minimize message to the current scene. All right, now send cannot just work in isolation send needs to be detected by the component. So let's go inside the main component once more. And here we'll add the receive trigger. This is what can receive that message that we just sent. So let's keep the channel the same. We wanna keep it to current scene because that's where we're sending our message. And we want to reuse that message because this trigger will just check for this particular message. So what are we saying here? We're saying receive from the scene this message. And that message is minimize. Well, it could have been anything, but fine, minimize. So whenever you get the message minimize, we want it to do something. And what do we want? We want to minimize this guy. So let me just go ahead and copy these minimization responses and just paste them here. And let's just try out if this works or not. So if I expand, all right, so far so good. It's a component now. And if I tap on the background, we're saying send. So there you go. It works. Now let me tell you one more cool thing that we can do with the same send and receive response and trigger set. So what if you had two components? Let me just duplicate this guy by pressing Alt and dragging. And I'll just put them in the center here. There you go. Now if I were to preview it once more, you can see that one is expanding, but whenever I click another one, it is also expanding. What if you wanted only one of them to expand at a time, right? You would do that by using send and trigger, again, in a very easy way. So let's go inside the main component. So let's think about what we wanna do here. We're saying, whenever we tap this guy, minimize every other one if it's expanded, if it's expanded. So let's go to main component. So we're saying, whenever we tap this guy, we want it to minimize every other dropdown if it's open. So what we'll do is we'll add a send response and we'll use the same message, this is important, because we want to give it the same instruction set. It's happening in receive already. So now let's see what this does. Preview, 
and you'll notice it's not even expanding anymore. Well, that's because we've programmed the tap interaction to do two things, and they are the opposite of each other. Let me show you what I mean. If you go inside the main component, you're saying tap to expand this guy, but you're also sending the minimize instruction. So how do we resolve this? We're saying minimize only if anything is expanded. So we can quickly resolve this by adding a condition. And what is the condition? The, the dropdown should be expanded. And how would we know if the options group is expanded? Well, a number of different things can indicate that, such as you know the, the options group has a height of greater than zero, its opacity is 100 when it's expanded. So we want to say if the opacity is 100, which means the dropdown is expanded, only then do the minimize responses. I'm going to select them and I'm going to drag them here. And let's see now if this works with just one simple condition. So I'm going to say expanding. And there you go. Easy as pie, wasn't it? I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to ask your question by using the link in the description below. Until next time then.